Hi guys, I'm Mike and this is F1 Fanatics. Welcome back to the F1 Weekly News Show, which is your place to get all the latest news from the world of F1 all in one place. I pick out uh, kind of the most standout headlines for me over the course of the past week and uh, yeah, give my opinion on those. And then obviously you guys in the comments below get involved and give your thoughts on the stories below as well. And don't forget if you are new around here and uh, you'd like more F1 content like this or feeder series content as one of the new stories today is linked to the feeder series, you can click that subscribe button and click the bell notification to keep up to date with all our latest content. But guys, let's get into the news, starting off with our first story, and the first few stories are kind of going to relate to Renault. And so the first one was kind of, I think, Cyril talking about, obviously, Esteban Ocon coming into the team, and he said that he's kind of given uh, a new energy, uh, kind of almost re-energised Renault in their kind of pursuit to keep pushing forward. I imagine a bit like what Ricardo did last year, getting another fresh face, someone like Ocon who would work for Mercedes. Um, so they now have two drivers that within the past couple of years have worked with two out of the top three teams in Red Bull and Mercedes. It certainly is having that good experience and yeah, personnel driving the team forward. And both obviously Ocon and Ricardo will be very hungry and very keen to impress in this next season in 2020. He also spoke about Cyril uh, with our story number two is with their 15 million pound investment, they didn't really have the workforce capable of really optimizing that. And that obviously there are a lot of new stories over the um, past season talking about Renault reshuffling uh, their backroom staff, especially the aero department and the aero technical department. Um, yeah, to kind of, you know, make sure that they are maximizing their potential and really making the gains that should warrant from their investment into the team. And so, yeah, it, it's gonna be very interesting to see how that reshuffle works out and how Renault's development goes over the next two, three, four years with that. And one of those key personnel is Pat Fry, obviously a very experienced, um, technical chassis development guy I think is his area of expertise. Uh, I believe he has worked with uh, McLaren, Ferrari, uh, I, I think maybe even Renault previously in a stint, in maybe actually in the form of where Lotus were. But a very experienced guy within Formula One and uh, yeah he's been given an official start date which I believe linked, uh, the story will be linked in the description below, is the 5th of February. It just escaped me for a moment there. But yes, I'm pretty sure he's starting the 5th of February. So maybe his impact, although I'm sure he was having conversations, won't necessarily be felt in the 2020 season. I'm sure that uh, come 2021, his influence is going to be key on the performance of the Renault car. And the last one is obviously over the close season, there has been a lot of driver announcements, not in Formula One, of course, as all those were confirmed. Uh, prior to the end of the season, but no, it is in the Junior Series and uh, Renault kind of today have just bang, dropped all the kind of announcements in the Junior Series, apart from one big name, which is Jack Aitken. We still do not know where he will drive and uh, it would be very surprised in this case if he drives in F2 next year, but obviously me and Mark on the Feeder Series definitely had him as uh, one of our ones to watch for the season, so it would be a massive surprise if he didn't compete. But we'll stick with the uh, two kind of guys in F2, and that is that Guan Yu Zhao definitely will be racing in F2 next year, and uh, it hasn't exactly been confirmed yet, but it is pretty much 95%, I'm sure, that Guan Yu Zhao will be racing uh, with Uni Virtuosi, with Callum Eilat as his um, you know, teammate, which obviously will be fantastic to see. Then uh, with ART, um, very inexperienced lineup. Obviously, have Marcus Armstrong there as well, um, one of the Ferrari Academy juniors. But alongside him, a guy that if you listen to us 
uh, especially tune in to this Friday's episode of the feeder series. Uh, Mark is very excited about the young Danish driver Christian Lundgaard and it is a massive seat for him and certainly he will be a talent one to watch there. One of Renault's most exciting juniors currently in their system. Well certainly within the touching distance now of Formula One. So very big announcements on that front and going to announcements not driver announcements but reveal announcements. We've had another reveal probably a couple will include in this story. So uh, the 17th of February is the last kind of one I think we'll have, which is a racing point. And uh, yeah, so they will be doing it. A change from their usual release date, which is usually at kind of Silverstone, it will be this year in Austria. So yeah, a change up for the racing point team there. Uh, Williams, Haas and Alfa Romeo, we believe, will be kind of uh, the first time we'll see those cars will be out on track on testing uh, obviously starting a couple of days later on the 19th so yes no kind of official big reveals uh, for those teams but we will be seeing those cars and what they will look like for the new season on track unless probably you know you might see a couple of the camouflage liveries there but I'm sure they will still have uh, yeah, a car dressed up in the season livery as well but yes those that is another announcement one of those teams Alfa Romeo um, the driver we're going to talk about them not the experienced one of Kimi Raikkonen but Giovinazzi and Giovinazzi said that it was really tough coming back into Formula One uh, after being two years since he last had a race within the sport and it really took him a long time to adapt but he felt like he was making big strides forward and uh, really improving towards the end of the season. And on his results and how he was performing on track and in qualifying, I'd be inclined to agree with that thought. And it's one that we've spoken about with Esteban Ocon obviously having a year out and other guys who've taken, uh, you know, had sustained periods out of the sport. It does take a little time to readapt to the cars in F1 and to get it right. But yes, Giovinazzi will certainly heading in the right direction at the end of 2019 and will be hoping for some big performances in the 2020 season. Our penultimate story involves Pirelli tyres and last year obviously they tested at the US Grand Prix with some unpopular feedback and it didn't really work well as testing at all. And Pirelli themselves have said they're not going to test on a race weekend again because, yeah, the backlash wasn't great for them. They will stick to, obviously, at the end of the season when they had that Abu Dhabi one and there were throughout the season, there were other days where they had uh, drivers testing the um, new tyres that they had produced. Um, so that won't be happening on a race weekend uh, this year. And in subsequent years, I believe it kind of, yeah, Pirelli were bitten by it and they certainly won't be returning to that soon. And then we move on to the last uh, story, a team who struggled with the Pirelli 2019 tyres and that was Haas. And Roman Grosjean has been saying that F1 needs to stay complicated. Um, what he kind of means by that is he doesn't want it to kind of be simplified and become a spec series and the cars to be easy to drive because, you know, and things to be easy to solve in F1, because that's part of what the core of F1 is. You know, it's not a spec series. It is one of the things that defines it for me. It is not just the best drivers in the world. It is the best machinery in the world of what humans can push the boundaries on and create in brilliance. And if it becomes too simple, too easy on that behalf, you kind of lose the soul of F1 for me. I know a lot of people are popular and want, uh, want to see a lot of action on track with top drivers. I think we all want to see that, but we still can't have it at the sacrifice at the brilliance of the engineering in F1 and how they push boundaries forward and the technology that then obviously filters down uh, below to road cars as well. Combined with that, we also have Kevin Magnussen believing that Haas can avoid having a kind of spiralling decline like Williams have suffered in the past couple of years and what McLaren suffered uh, kind of between 2014, uh, yeah, 2014 to uh, 2018 probably was yeah, still in that decline there. 
they reckon they can avoid it, they think they're going to have a positive. Both drivers are speaking positively about the season ahead. I would like to see Haas do well, uh, not just because Katie is a fan of the channel and she obviously supports Magnussen and Haas, but more to do with the fact that it is good for F1 that the newest team within it can obviously be competitive and do well within the sport because it encourages uh, the future of more teams maybe coming into the sport, but also competitive cars on the grid lead to better racing. And if they go into a spiral out control like Williams have done, then yeah, really it, it wouldn't be great for F1 to be having two teams like that. Hopefully Williams can rise up again. But guys, that has been your roundup of the news. A little bit longer one as well. I think in these closed season, there are kind of getting quite a few bit of news stories now as we approach the season. So yes, trying to keep you up to date as possible. If I have missed any of kind of news stories that you think are outstanding, as always, comment down below and happy to discuss those news stories. But in the ones that we have spoken through today, um, make sure you kind of comment down below on your thoughts on those. What are your thoughts on the Renault F2 Juniors who have been announced? What's your one that you're most excited by? What do you think the kind of aero reshuffling and Pat Fry's impact can be on Renault? What do you expect from Esteban Ocon this season? Um, do you think cars can avoid spiralling out of control in their decline? And, you know, do you think that Giovinazzi was improving at the end of the season? and is progressing forward nicely for the 2020 season. All those stories, would love to hear your opinion on them as always guys. And if you've liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Let's us know that you enjoy what we're doing. And like I said at the start of the video, if you are new around here, you can subscribe to the channel, click that bell notification, and you can keep up to date with all our latest content. But that's been your news guys, and for now, UF1 fans, keep racing.